Castellanos, who was a little girl, the little round girl from appointments that she liked. And, and she's so sharp during that interview, put some trinket on her desk when we leave tonight. Uh, she gave me so much information, and she later was elevated to, I mean, years later, uh, Jane's idea was when Anne opened that office in New York, get Sandra. And, and uh, Anne said, do you think she can do that? And Jane said, absolutely. So she stole Sandra away from, um, her, was it her butts? Charles, Charles Butts, the H-E-B guy, to, she was his assistant. And he cried when she left. Uh, Anne stole her to come and run her office in New York. And Sandra told me a story. This was in the play. I'm just going to try and recollect it. I haven't run it in 10 years. But that when the family and friends were planning the funerals, the funeral and the memorials very fast, as I say in the play, Sandra was, uh, everybody was called in to give them different assignments. And Sandra had to go scope out the cemetery, the Texas cemetery where where things would be. And when she did that, there was a backhoe uh, digging digging the grave. And there was a, a Hispanic family, a mother, a, a father, and a, a little kid, and a grandmother, I think, and wearing church clothes. And they were wandering towards this. And Sandra was like sitting on this little hillock watching. And uh, they walked by and, and they said, is this the, the grave of the governor? And Sandra said yes, and I guess they were, spoke somewhat English. And Sandra said, oh, but uh, you know, she's lying in state in the Capitol. And um, you, could go, you could go see her. And they said, oh, no, 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 they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be allowed to go in there and do that. And Sandra said, of, of course you would. Um, here, let me draw you a map. And she, she drew them a map of how to get to the Capitol from there and that they could go and they could see her uh, lying in the state in the rotunda. And uh, I, you know, Anne is telling this story in the play, what Sandra did. And that, and then Anne says, uh, I don't know if they got over there, but, but I like to think that they did and, and that they saw that the doors were open. Lots of things like that, you know. I mean, actually that's, that's true. That's a true it story. is true. It, it is true, and it's actually true. Also, I mean, I know you refer to the, you know, yeah, the gang all getting together and putting together this extraordinary memorial. But the most important thing about that week was that she did lie in state, and thousands of people came. I remember going to the Capitol, and people could write their stories. And I, I remember being there, and um, a, there was a, a guy, you know, in a gimme cap and. A, um, standing in line and he stopped me i don't know he said are you ann's daughter and he said i said yeah and he said well you know uh i i run a i run a long haul rig um but i had to drive over from tennessee because i just had to be here and say thank you and and that was from yeah. tennessee yeah and i think that was the thing that is hard to capture when you say why should your life only be about you because that campaign and that four years we got, you know, um, it did change how people felt about government. And there were so many people, and I think you say it, I don't know if you say it exactly this in the play, but there were more people of color, LGBTQ folks, um, seniors, you name it, teachers that were appointed to um, boards and commissions than all the previous governors combined. It literally changed the face of government in Texas, and no one has really been able to undo that. I mean, Greg Abbott's done a lot, but he hasn't been able to undo that. And yeah, that's the bell it. you could not unring. Yeah. So I think that's. I mean, that and that was really what that was about was people feeling like finally seen, which I think is what people are asking for, for from government. For sure. Um, okay. Another thing that just really struck me this time, hearing the obviously that great line about you know. Ann Richards and Barbara Jordan, you know, uh, two two women in hundred and now we're hundred and some out, one year. God years. So this week, it only took two hundred and thirty three years, and Katanji Brown Jackson is now on the Supreme Court. Um, happy day, a happy day. 
so yes, one, we should just continue. You know, there's so few things to celebrate like that. That is so important. And you also saw what she went through. We all saw what she went through. And so in some ways too, I think of all the things that mom went through, that Barbara Jordan went through, all these women who were first. And in some ways it's, um, it's just as ugly as it ever was. And that, so I didn't mean to take, spoil the celebration of that moment, but to think that this is still what women and particularly black women, um, women of color have to go through the, the, the yardstick is, is, there isn't even a yardstick because as, as my daughter Lily would say, who worked for um, uh, now Vice President Kamala Harris, it's like, it's not like you have to be better than, there isn't ever even a place you can can get to that's good enough you know it's just kind of extraordinary but it does seem like a great um barbara and mom are smiling about um yeah the ascension just of uh, justice day. jackson well, i think um the speaking of i mean like the era of trump is something that that i personally and i suspect you could never have imagined the 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 tone and the events and the thing kinds of things that happen since the Trump era and then the floodgates of, of, uh, of really awfulness in personal character that rushed forward after that. And the only thing that I can think that's positive, because I'm trying, I'm really trying, is, is that, uh, that, well, it's really has brought out the worst. So now we're seeing the worst. So this is the worst. And the fact is that numerically, numerically, the side of the angels is slowly clawing for territory and winning some ground. And numerically, one can only think that this will continue and continue and that, that eventually things are really going to be changed. And it is water on stone, but it is water on stone and water wins. That's good. I'll take, I mean, I'll take that. I'll take anything at this point. The water wins. This is good. That'll be my new motto. Um, I mean, one of the questions from the audience, I'm just actually going to set it up a little bit because I'm just so outraged. And I, I don't know if you all probably don't follow every, every single thing that happens in Texas, but you know, a few days ago, a young woman in Rio Grande, city down Star County, if you've ever been to the border of Texas, was jailed for, I mean, the facts are still coming out, but essentially it sounded like she had a, a, a miscarriage um, and had perhaps um, tried to use medication abortion or, in order to um, abort a pregnancy. And she was turned in by the hospital and she was put in jail. This is a 26 year old woman, $500,000 bond. And she's now out um, because there has been such outrage. But I, I guess in another kind of way of looking at what's happening is the outrageousness of what folks are doing um, is going to now be on display. And I feel like that is also something that is energizing for people to be able to, it's not theoretical anymore. I feel like this is, uh, you know, the things that they've been trying to do to, to women in Texas in particular, but not just women now, of course, transgender children, you name it. Um, so I guess, I mean, the question is sort of a, I don't know, what would Ann Richards think about what is going on in Texas these days and what would she do about it? I guess we don't know, but in any case, someone asked that question, so I feel like I need to ask it. <laughs> well, people are always asking me what, what would she say and what would she do as if I would know that. I mean, the fact is I, I do, I do understand her character a lot. I do understand her behavior a lot. And I do understand what she felt about a lot of things. But really, uh, I mean, that is such a big question. I, I, just, I don't, just don't think we can know that. But I think that Anne did feel that things, that life was progress. She was a progressive. And, and that the wheel, the, you know, the sphere rolls and it, I, I'm making this up, but I'm just like the sphere rolls and it seems to go backwards as it goes under, but it's actually all rolling forward and forward. And I, I think she would take note of that water wins notion because I think she did feel the big picture. I mean, this woman was a general. She thought 
big picture. She had a long view, even just city politics. She said, like, um, you, you think progress, I think traffic. You know, she just really lived in this world in a remarkable way. Um, what you're just saying reminds me of that great line of Tony Kushner's in Angels in America, which is the world only spins forward. Yeah, and that's it. I think that was, that is, that is what she believed. And to your, your closing lines, she believed that government should work for the people. And if it doesn't, it is up to the people not to complain, but to call them out and to change who's in office. And I, I just firmly believe that is what we are can do and will have to do. Um, and because we're better than this, um, this country's better than this. And um, so we got a lot of we got a lot of work to do. Um, someone uh, also wrote, and maybe you've already answered this sort of, but what's one way we can all be more like Ann Richards in everyday life? She would have some thoughts about that. <laughs> First of all, hire staff. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's hard to know. She was a real one-off. But she inspires people. She generally inspires people. But I think she brings out some impulses in people that is unique to them, unique to the listener. Uh, and, you know, if you're receptive and have needs and thoughts or upsets and worries or desires, as we all do, she will lift you. She will provoke you. She will make you go to that thing. This is why I said I think it's very likely that uh, the occasional person in this audience is at a certain point in life with drinking where they, they go, oh, okay, yeah. Got to, do, got to do something about it. And it's it's that kind of thing that people have an effect of inspiring people to do that thing, maybe, that they are likely to want to do anyway in some corner. And not everybody is going to be going to politics, but it's the, you know, the person who in a, in a community gets a stop sign put up at that bad intersection can continue, and you know, we all know that kind of person. How many of you, how many of me, I mean, you think like, not that intersection over at 12th and Columbia, Jesus, not, there's another accident there. Well, I mean, some people say, well, how do, who do you go to? Let me look that up, city council. I, there must be a person I can speak to about that. Of course, that's a person who potentially could be president because they have, you know, or they can just stay in their community and be useful to that community. So the point is, I think, community. The point is you're not alone. And the line everybody, including Cecile, when they ever quote anything from this play, get it wrong. Uh, I mean, they get it just slightly wrong. Every reviewer, every reviewer quotes a line from this play, gets it just a little wrong. And Cecile, says, like for instance, the LA Times reviewer, what a great review that was, except he says, uh, quoting Anne says, uh, Texas, uh, Texas, is, is, Texas is as big as France. And then he, the reviewer says, well, it's bigger actually. No, doofus, the line is, Texas is bigger than France. So, uh, I mean, you know, I'm up here. So this one, I've so never see, said that line before, no, no, just to be clear. No. Okay, what line you have? Which the, is the, the line I, is, and this is exactly how Anne said it. There's very little in this play that Anne actually said, but there are about 15 phrases that are exact, and they are linchpins throughout the play. And one of them is, why should your life be, why should your life be just about you? That's the line. Okay. There you got it. I, thanks for that note. <laughs> Can we say it all together? Why, Why should, should your, your life, life be just, just about, about you? you? That may be all, all you really need. I have one. I, can I ask you one last thing? Yes, of course you can. Uh, I'm not going to stop you from chatting. And I have to tell one more thing, too. Go ahead. 
Okay, do you want to tell yours first or you want me to ask? It's just a tiny thing about me and Cecile. <laughs> Cecile, when she, you know, was head of Planned Parenthood for uh, 12 years or something. And And uh, we weren't in touch much until I was in New York, uh, actually doing the play. And uh, and even then, it was only by text or something. I never saw Cecile. I mean, she's insanely busy. She traveled a great deal, and I knew that. And I was pretty sure she had her phone turned off in the middle of the night. But if I had some question, I would text her. You know, would Anne say yada da da? And then and. Often she would just text me right back. Yeah, but then she loved to use, you know, Yiddish phrases, but they were always wrong. And so, and, and so we would have these late night texts. And one time, and I would text thinking, well, she'll answer in the morning. And one night she texted me back instantly. She said, go to bed. <laughs> I was trying to take care of you. <laughs> um, that was it. I, I love you so much. Um, and I, I just want to so be able to much. say that on this stage. Um, and you, you have such a gift, and it's just it's been such an honor to be part of this journey. I guess I just feel like kind of almost to like you're um, referring back to the time we had dinner after after uh, we closed in, or you closed in New York. So how does it feel 15 years later to be here? We are. This is. You said this is the last time you're going to do this show. How do you feel? Well, I feel wonderful to be doing it. Uh, as I said, I feel I've on my own shoulders in this performance, which is a great reward for me. And uh, generally, playing Ann Richards is its own reward. And so it's been wonderful. And I, you know, I say it's the last time because it really has to be. It's I have to carve out five months out of a year where I'm not going to make any income, and I, and that. And also, uh, the physical effort of it, there's, you, uh, once you're actually rehearsing and playing, you, there's no life of any kind. And, and it's taxing. I will be 80 in January. Um, and thank you. That was the actually the only good aspect of being 80, is getting a hand for it. <laughs> so. But this, this is a big production. I don't know if you realize this, but this this floor, this is a huge, this is a huge production in that this is a part, big chunks of this are from our Lincoln Center set. And this governor's office in Lincoln, at the Lincoln Center Theater at the Beaumont there, moved 35 feet. With a lighted twinkling chandelier, it moved 35 feet forward, slowly, inexorably, and it was like, Oh my God! So, this this is a big production. This all has to go into storage. I mean, I can't do a bit. So this is this is the final run of Anne, and it's been a privilege with this audience. I'll tell you. Um, well, it's been such a privilege to be here um, with you. I also want to say something about Kevin Bailey, who is standing to the side, who literally has been on this journey. The whole, the, whole the whole shooting match, yeah. Anyway. Exec producer from day one, 12 yeah. years ago. So please give it up for Kevin. It was just, Kevin Bailey. Um, and, well, I uh, would also say, if you ever needed a third brother, I'd be happy to be an honorary uh, member of the, always uh, room for the Richards more. family, too. So. Always room for more. Um, Holland Taylor, the most extraordinary actor of, um, of our time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, you've got a great crowd today. Thank, thank you for those uh, are watching online. I know our director is watching from North Carolina, so a shout out to Ben Klein. Uh, and um, wow, that you and Ellen are with us today. You do us proud and great honor. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Safe home. God bless.